This is a video for digital society students, the higher level students, and it's to help you prepare for paper three. Now paper three, um, this is for the May 2024 examination session. So by now, students should have their pre-release uh, reading. And this is just here above my head, the pre-release statement. So first and foremost, you need to study that extensively. Uh, so spend some time doing some research, extended research, inquiry research, and get familiar with that paper. Uh, once you've done that, I've crafted a few practice examination questions. Now these examination questions are based on the specimen paper. So it's just to help, it's, the, it's, it's for you to practice. Now the way it's structured, there's four questions. Question 1A and 1B, the way, first of all, 1A, you'll be asked to identify some of the digital technology that's uh, involved in the intervention. So be sure that you understand all the digital technology involved and be able to explain it and give some examples. Question 1B then talks about the digital technology and the impacts on the users or the people or different stakeholders. So you need to be able to talk about that kind of a relationship, the impacts and the implications. So in question two, you're gonna be focusing on the intervention. And you're trying to match basically the challenge with the intervention. So you need to demonstrate you've got a good understanding of the challenge and a good understanding of the interventions that have been presented in the uh, pre-release. And then question four is evaluate. Now what you're doing is evaluating either one of the proposals or both of the proposals. Now a digital society guidebook is very clear about how to actually evaluate and that's what you need to do in question three. And then the fourth part, this is where you give your own recommendation. So you're creating your own intervention and you're giving a recommendation uh, and it's to address the actual challenges. Okay, let's dig a bit deeper. So question one, the question I've proposed here is just identify two ways a medical practitioner working at the proposed digital supported community health hub might share medical information. Now, if we knock down to the response, so thinking of a digital solution where we, basically the question wants you to talk about things like cloud computing, email, encrypted messaging, teleconferencing. So be clear that you're telling the examiner that you know about the digital technology. So question 1B, I've written here, explain why the proposed digital home care, so I'm just focusing on one of the two interventions, may take time for people in rural and remote locations to be regular users, so the acceptability. So this is where you can talk about some different technology that's been introduced, and perhaps some technology that was um, latched onto quite quickly by a large number, and then some that was, that was, there was a fair bit of lag time between the release of the technology and a large number of people actually using it. And then that make that connection with this scenario. How about the, about the rural people uh, accepting or starting to use the technology in large numbers? And we're talking about things like connectivity issues, because this is rural and regional areas. The acceptability, be sure to use that kind of, that phrase, that's a digital society phrase. Think about the cost. Think about the privacy concerns. Some people, um, particularly in the rural uh, areas, they may be a bit concerned about using some technology. So the idea of technology, but also new things, but also a bit worried about um, what the technology, what data may be taken from them or what might be shared. So just, these are the kind of uh, response uh, ideas that you're supposed to be sharing in your response. Question two, explain two ways in which the proposed digital support, supported community health hub, intervention one. So I, again, I've just focused on one of the interventions, but basically how, does this, how, do, how do these interventions actually address the challenge? So in your, when you're writing this answer, you need to be clear that you can explain what the challenge is and that you've done some extended research about the challenges. And then also, how does this t intervention actually address some of the challenges? Now in question three, the question turns to the evaluation. Now evaluation, this is a clear section in the Digital Society Guidebook. Um, so it asks here, evaluate the potential effectiveness of the proposed digital home care. 
So I've mentioned here in my practice question, just evaluate invention two, intervention two. But to prepare for your uh, paper three exam, I would evaluate, practice evaluating both. Practice evaluating intervention one and intervention two. There's actually, if you look at the uh, Digital Society Guide, there is an evaluation process that you must, when you're answering this, you must be sure that you, you, you can, you're, you're basically telling the examiner that you know about this evaluation process that's outlined in the Digital Society Guide. Just be, be aware, when that evaluation term is used, then we need to look at it through the lens of either equality, acceptability, cost, feasibility, innovation, ethics. Now just be aware the exam question may actually ask for you specifically to talk about equity or specifically to talk about cost. So be sure to read that question and reread the question so you're actually evaluating it through the correct lens. Now when it comes to evaluation, one of the simplest things to do is a SWOT analysis. But really, don't worry about the O and T. Just think about the strengths and the weaknesses. So if it's asking about uh, uh, cost, talk about the, some of the strengths. Let's talk about some of the weaknesses with the cost. So you, you're really exploring it through an, an evaluation. So you're 100% evaluating the intervention and you're doing it through these kind of the digital society uh, framework that they've actually offered here. Now, I've mentioned here, 5.3 is sustainable development. If you could weave that into your answers too, it shows that you've got a lot of depth of knowledge. Now, if you look at the assessment criteria for this question, question three, you need to have a focused, your response needs to be focused and shows your in-depth understanding of the, of the question. So be sure to read that question and uh, respond directly. If it's an evaluation question, which is probably gonna be, that you actually evaluate it. Now, what type of evaluation? Be sure to respond. If it wants you to respond, uh, if, you, if, if the question asks you to evaluate the ethics, don't evaluate it through cost. Make sure you respond to the actual question. Next bullet point here, uh, the assessment criteria to get a score of eight, you need to, your response needs to demonstrate sustained evaluation that is relevant and well supported throughout. So you need some evidence that you've done some kind of research. So it's not just your own ideas, but evidence that you actually have done some research. And so you're supporting. When you make a claim about something, it's supported. And the, there's two ways you can support it. It's one with an example, and the other one is with research, or oh, both, combination of both. Okay, moving on to question four. This is the last one. Now, this is the one you need to put a bit of time and effort in because this is worth 12 marks. Now, this basically is, now it's for your turn to present your intervention. So for, the, for question four, which is the 12 mark question, you need to demonstrate here that you know the different stages that the Digital Society Guidebook has outlined. Now, they're very clear in the guidebook about the different stages here. So stage one is creating your inquiry focus. So this is like your introduction. This is the introduction. You talk about uh, the OECD report and the different stakeholders that are involved. And remember, it, you are, the topic here is about global well-being and local and global inequalities. So you need to demonstrate that you understand what this is all about and explain this. So this is like setting the scene. Step two is where you explore and investigate the challenges. So you need to thoroughly understand what this OECD report is all about, but also you need to do some extra research, in particular in your local community as well. So whichever country you're in, think about your local. So connecting the OECD report to local uh, issues and challenges. Now you're also supposed to be focusing on some global inequalities as well. So explore the challenges within your own country, but also connect it to another country or countries. Maybe there's some, some, a couple of countries that have a similar issue. If that's too challenging, then just focus on your country and another country, because that actually shows you've got a glow, local and a global uh, focus with your response. So this is exploring the challenges. Now, stage three is where you identify your in intervention. So this is where you articulate and explain your digital intervention. 
Um, now, it needs to be in one of the categories or it can be a combination of more than one. It Does your intervention mitigate? You need to know exactly what mitigate is. What about intercedes, enhance or resolves? So you make sure you make sure you explain uh, your intervention, a digital intervention, how how it's actually going to address the challenges, and is it going to address them by mitigating? And how does it mitigate the challenge, or does it intercede? How does your intervention intercede and um, and address the challenge, the challenges that you've identified? Now, just be aware. There's a lots of different challenges in the OECD report, so it may help with your research and your response if you focus on something, and then it might be easy to hang all your uh, responses, uh, frame them around that specific need. Um, now, stage four, this is the last stage. Now, this is the evaluation stage. Now, we've already evaluated in question three there the two interventions that I've outlined. So we're gonna use those same evaluation on your own intervention. Now, that means you need to evaluate. Just go back to strengths and weaknesses. Strengths and weaknesses of your own intervention. And you need to examine it through either about, uh, uh, you can focus on equity, acceptability, cost, feasibility. So you can, you can actually try and cover most of these um, now you might want to, if you do like a chart, maybe two tables, one strengths, one weaknesses. You can talk about the strengths ethically. These are all the strengths. The weaknesses, you might talk about the cost. This is very expensive. However, blah, blah, blah. Now don't forget to use that word however as well. So you're doing some, uh, there's some, uh, it's like a balanced, uh, balanced, uh, um, balanced response. And it demonstrates that you're aware that by using the words however, and doing this evaluation, you're you're not presenting your idea as if it's the idea and it's the best and it's without fault. Every intervention is gonna have some challenges. So this is kind of this what they, the, the phrase critical analysis. So you're looking at some of the strengths and you're also presenting some of the weaknesses. Now the strengths and weaknesses could be from different perspectives. From the government's perspective, this is a strength. However, from a, a person in a regional community, this is actually a weakness. So this is the kind of, you need to basically demonstrate you are doing some critical thinking here. Now to get top marks here, this is worth 12 marks. To get top marks here, you need to demonstrate that your response is focused and shows an in-depth understanding of the demand of the question. So reread the question, reread the question, make sure you respond correctly that this is your intervention. So if you follow the stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, you should be right. Uh, your response is well supported throughout with relevant. So whatever you explain, if you explain something, connect it to a real life example or research or a combination of both. So every, every statement, everything you present needs to be supported. It's not just your ideas, it needs to be supported ideas. Uh, the third bullet point here, recommended, recommendations are presented and well supported with clear considerations of possible trade-offs and implications. So when it talks about trade-offs and implications, it's a bit like cause and effect. If this intervention is presented, then this might happen, but this might happen. But if that happens, then there's gonna be a trade-off here. So be, be sure to understand what that phrase trade-off means. When, you, when you're talking about a trade-off, an easy example that, of, the, of this is a cost. So your initial cost for setting up your intervention may be high, but the trade-offs will be that it will actually reduce um, costs in another area. Or when this happens, this happens. When this happens, this happens. So this is this kind of balanced uh, evaluation that you're, you're doing in question four. Now, last bullet point, well-structured and effectively organized. If you structure at stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, you'll be fine. Okay, good luck with paper three.